praise your beautiful name. We give you all the honor and all the glory this morning. Hallelujah. We give you all the praise. And you're beautiful. And you're holy. And your precious name we, we pray this morning. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. What a beautiful atmosphere this morning, church. Let's continue to praise his name. Are you ready this morning? I know the worship team is ready this morning. But are you ready? Oh, clap your hands with me this morning. Let's sing it. I was lost with a broken heart. You picked me up, now I'm set apart. From the ash I am born again. Forever safe in my Savior's hands. You are more than my words can say. I'll follow you, Lord, for all my days. Fix my eyes, follow in your ways. Forever free and unending grace. Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher. We lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love never ends. We go. You are alive. You are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. You are all. You are all we need. Your love has set us free. You are. You are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. You are all. You are all we need. Your love has set us free. broken heart you pick me up you, you pick, pick me up now i'm set apart from the ash i am born again forever safe forever safe in my savior's hand you are more you are more than my words can say i'll follow you i'll follow you lost for all my days fix my eyes fix my eyes follow in your way Forever free in an ending way. Cause you are, cause you are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, we lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love never ends. Oh, oh, you are alive. You are alive in us. Yes, you are. Nothing can take your place. Oh, there's nothing. You are all we need. Your love has set us free. You are alive. You are alive in us. Nothing, Nothing can take your place. You are all. You are all we need. Your love has set us free. See, because you are. Because you are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher. We lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love never ends. Because you are. Because you are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher. We lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love never ends. You are alive. You are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. You are. You are all we need. Your love has set us free. You are free. alive. You are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. You are. You are all we need. Your love has set oh, us see, free. Oh, see, because you are. You are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, we lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love never ending. Oh, oh, cause you are, cause you are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, we lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love never ending. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Are you ready to 
jump in the river. Are you ready for your healing this morning? Hallelujah. If you're ready, sing it with me, church, this morning. There is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain that drowns sorrows. There is an ocean that's deeper, that's deeper than fear. The tide is rising. Oh, it's rising this morning. There is a current. There is a current stirring deep inside. It's overflowing, it's overflowing from the heart of God. The flood of heaven is crashing, it's crashing over us. The tide is rising. Sing it this morning, bursting, bursting, bursting. Love from the ground, Love from the ground. We feel it, we feel it now. Sing bursting, bursting, oh. bursting. Oh. From the ground, we we come, we come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come. Side is overflowing from the heart, from the heart of God. The flood of heaven is crashing, it's crashing over us. The tide is rising, oh, and rising, singing, bursting, bursting, bursting. From the ground, up on the ground, we feel it now. Sing, bursting, bursting, bursting. Up on the ground, we feel it now. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive. We come alive in the river. Hey, we come alive in the river. See, I know my blessings. I know my blessings in the river. I know my blessings in the river. It's in the river. I know my blessings in the river. Hey, I know my blessings in the river. Oh, let's declare that this morning. I know my blessings in the river. Oh. I know my blessings in the river. Oh, I know my blessings in the river. Hey, I know my blessings in the See, river. We come alive. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive. We come alive in the river. Hey, we come alive One more time. in the river. We come alive. We come alive in the river. morning that those prison doors are open we'll break them open this morning break open prison doors set all the captives free spring up a well spring up a well spring up a well in me nothing can stop nothing, nothing can, can stop, stop this joy you have joy this morning church we're, we're dancing, dancing in the street we're dancing Spring up a well, spring up a well, spring up a well. Say nothing can stop, nothing can stop this joy. We're dancing, we're dancing in the streets. Spring up a well, spring up a well, spring up a well. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. Go 
deep, waist deep, all the way in. We're going ankle deep, waist deep. Oh, we're getting all the way in this one. Going ankle deep, waist deep, all the way in. We're going 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 ankle deep, waist deep all the way in. We're going, we're going, we're going ankle deep, waist deep all the way in. We're going ankle deep, waist deep all the way in. We're going ankle deep. Oh, we're going all the way in. 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 We come alive. We come alive in the river. Oh. We come alive in the river. Oh yeah. We come alive in the river. Hey. We come alive in the river. I know my blessing. I know my blessings in the river. Blessings in the river. Are you gonna get your blessing this morning? I know my blessings in the river. I know my blessings in we the river. Alive. We come alive in the river. 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 I don't know what you came in with, but I know one thing this morning. He has called you to be here, and whatever you came in with, he's ready to change your life forever. He's ready to transform your life, but we got to let it go. We got to put it down at the altar because he will do it. That burden, those heavy burdens that we carry on our shoulders here in this atmosphere, here in this place, in the Lord's house, he will take that from you. We just got to let him this morning, church. 
Oh, and if we're alive, we feel his presence this morning, heavy this morning. We worship you, Father. We're ready, Lord. We're ready for you, Lord. We're ready for you, Lord. Take it away from us. We worship you. The name of Jesus is greater. The name of Jesus is stronger. The name of Jesus is higher above all things. The name of Jesus is bigger the name of Jesus has power the name of Jesus is higher above all things there's just something about the name Jesus, there's just something about the name of Jesus. Sing the name. The name of Jesus is greater. Of Jesus is stronger. The name of Jesus is higher. Above all Sing it, church. There's just something about the name of Jesus. There's just something about. The name, the name of Jesus, of Jesus. Yeah. Sing Jesus name above Jesus name above all names Healer, healer, the one who takes all He will take your pain, save your risen from the One who takes all pain. Oh, Savior. Savior, risen from the grave. Your name is Jesus, Lord over all. Sing it this morning. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No other name, no other name like Jesus. Sing it. Jesus. There's no other name. Jesus. No other no name. No other name. No Sing it again. Jesus. 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 No other name. Jesus. No other name. No other name like Jesus. The 
one who takes all pain. He'll take your pain. Savior, risen from the grave. Your name is Jesus. Lord, all the rest. Sing Jesus' name. Jesus, name above all names. Takes all pain. Sing it, Savior. Savior, risen from the grave. Your name is Jesus. This morning, cry out, no other name, no other name like Jesus. There's no other name, no other name, no other name like Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, no other name, no other name like, there's no other name like your name, there's no other name like your name, we worship you. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. Sing it, church. You have led me through the fire. In darkest nights. In darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Oh, sing it. Running after, running after 
after me. It's running after me. Oh, goodness is running after me. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after me. running after me. Oh, your goodness. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. It's running after me. It's running after us. This morning, your goodness, Lord, and all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing it again. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, oh I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, your goodness. Goodness is running after, it's running after me. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life, with my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. It's running after me. Come on, sing it out. With my life laid down, I surrender Come on, declare it this I morning. You everything. Hallelujah. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness. Your goodness is running after. Hallelujah. It's running after With my life. It's running after me. Hallelujah. Come on, will you lift up your hands? Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness, God. You've been so good to us, God. I thank you for all the different family members that are here this morning, Jesus. And we come with a grateful heart. It's more than a song, God, because truly you have been good to us. Hallelujah. And we owe you our life. Everything we have and everything we are belongs to you, Jesus. We just pray, God, the remainder of our service, God, that you will continue to speak to our hearts, God, in a way that it will be impossible to remain the same, God. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a good praise. Come on, are you alive this morning? Come on, shout praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Are you glad you came to church this morning? 
Amen. Praise God. We're going to go around, shake a few hands, share a little love in the name of Jesus. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. We can go ahead and make our, our way back to our seats. Amen. Can we give God one more good hand of praise this morning? Amen. Because God is good. Amen. And the presence of God is flowing in this house. Worship was awesome this morning, man. It's so good to come into the house of God with men and women of faith and be able to worship the Lord and just experience his presence. It's, it's a beautiful day. Amen. We're going to have a great time today. I just have a few announcements that I want to make mention of and just give to you today amen on thursday night we have our revive service every thursday at seven o'clock so make sure you make your way back for our midweek service it's great to come in the middle of the week and get another breakthrough and continue to hear from the lord and so seven o'clock this thursday we'll be here for our revive service amen and then also tonight someone say tonight say tonight tonight at six o'clock we're having a powerful service there at our, our regional church in Fremont. Uh, Pastor William McDowell, uh, many may know him as a worship uh, leader for many, many years. Amen. Old school worship, prayer, music. He was that for many years and he became a pastor a few years back. And he's here in the Bay Area. Come on, somebody. And so he'll be there in Fremont tonight at 6 o'clock. And if you would like to go, just go online at vofremont.org. And you can register there and make sure that you get to the house tonight. It's going to be a powerful time for a revival service in Fremont, California. Amen. And then also tonight we have a life skills class, I believe, at 6 p.m. And so if you're here in town and you're not able to make it for whatever reason, we have a life skills class taking place here tonight at 6 p.m that you could come to and continue to grow, amen. And then on Wednesday night, we have our God's Anointed Now Generation service. This is for our young adults, our students, young couples, that you can come and you can continue to grow and connect with the, the young adult ministry, amen. And so uh, at 7 o'clock on Wednesday, they're in a series called Meaningless, and they've been talking about how everything else of the world is meaningless except for our relationship with the Lord. And God, great things have been happening in our God's anointed now generation. So if you're able to make it or if you're a parent, you have a young person, bring them to the house of the Lord on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Amen. You will be happy that you brought your young people to connect to what God is doing in our third wave ministry. Amen. Lastly, I just want to make mention after service, we've been having our Run for Hope uh, food sales after every service. All the finances have been going towards world missions. We're in a campaign mode right now, Victory Outreach International, where we're raising funds for churches that are all over the world. And so after service, I know that we're hungry and usually we probably go and grab a bite somewhere, but stick around, fellowship, connect with the people of God and buy a plate there in the front because all of our finances are coming together to continue to build the kingdom of God all around the world. How many are excited about that, amen? How many are excited and glad that, man, I can have a good meal, I can fellowship, but I can also know that my finances are going to building churches in other countries around the world. So we got some chicken taquitos here today. Come on, somebody. Woo! Oh, I can't wait till services. Come on, somebody. Get some spiritual food and then we get some good food after service. Amen. Turn your attention to the screens. We have a couple of video announcements for you this morning. God bless you.
if you didn't know by now, God is opening up doors and we're living in a supernatural time. I'm talking to promised people tonight. I'm talking to mega leaders tonight. It is a time of miracles for those who choose to step out. Praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a good, good praise this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So many thank Jesus this morning, right? We, we are here in the house of God, and, and, and it's good to be here because God has extended our lives. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask my wife to just join me up here for a minute so she can say hello to everyone. Praise the Lord. And... and uh, also, this, this, this evening at, at 6 p.m., I, I, I got a text that um, the admission fee for the revival there in Fremont, I think it was reduced in half. If you want to come tonight, praise the Lord, because there's only one service tonight. So some of us are going to be able to make it there. Praise the Lord. But give the Lord a good praise in that God is doing amazing things. Amen. Amen. How many are glad that you woke up this morning? <laughs> Not only did we wake up, but in our right mind. I thank God for that. And, um, you know, just in driving over here, um, I have a little bit of a, a drive. And, you know, the Lord always gives me a word or speaks to me. And this morning I just kept on hearing salvation, salvation, salvation. The joy of your salvation. And I started thinking about it, and I started thinking, what really is the joy of our salvation? Because we can, we can say it so lightly, like, I got the joy of my salvation. But what the joy of our salvation is, or what it means to me is, it's something that's eternal. In other words, it's not controlled by a physical circumstance. It's not controlled by a sickness. It's not controlled by our kids being out there and not being saved. It's not controlled by depression. It's not controlled by anxiety. It's not controlled by our fears. But it's something eternal, that joy that the world cannot give and the world cannot take away. So I want to encourage you here this morning. If you came in and you feel that the enemy has just robbed you of your joy, remember your joy is not based on your circumstance today. Amen? And I don't know about you, but that makes me joyful because all hell can be breaking loose. But yet I can still have the joy of my salvation. I can still raise my hands to my God and say, thank you, God. You are good. Don't ever forget the joy of your salvation. Amen. I love our church. I, I'm excited this morning. I can't wait to see what God's going to do this morning. I know God's given my husband a word. So I pray that you're just here with an open heart to receive. Amen. God bless you. Love you this morning. Lord. Amen. Woo. I feel like just making an altar call and praying for everybody and praying. You can pray for me too. Glory to God. But that's good in that, uh, you know, our relationship with God goes beyond, you know, our circumstances and, and everything that we may be facing today. That's the reason why we're able to rejoice and shout and lift up our hands and come together. Praise the Lord. And if there's anything that is, is, is holding you back, this morning I believe that God is going to give you a breakthrough. God is going to give you a breakthrough. That's why we come together so that God can continue to fill you up with good things so that you can keep on fighting. And not only fighting, but in victory while you're fighting the good fight of faith. Come on, somebody need to give him a good praise because that's what this is all about. And this morning, I'm going to ask the ushers to please take their place. 
we want to go ahead and pray for the tithes and the offerings. Glory to God. And how many know that we remain faithful to the Lord in good times, difficult times. Why? Because we believe and we know that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far beyond what we can even think, ask, or imagine, the Bible says. Meaning, God is able to give us a breakthrough and come through for us even in the difficult times. And so we can be faithful to the Lord in the area of tithes and offerings. We continue to challenge our congregation and this church in that this year, by the end of the year, we want to have 100% tithers in the house of God. We continue to say that. We're not just saying it. What we mean is that if you haven't been tithing with consistency, if you haven't been tithing with consistency, this is a good time for you to jump in. And you want to jump in because you want also to have God's blessings upon your life. And he promises that as we remain faithful in tithes and offerings, that he will bless our lives. So you want to do that. But then also so that the house of God and the ministry is able to do everything we need to do with the resources in the house. We want to do that. We want to reach out. We want to do all those things. I was at a church not too long ago, a few months back. And one of the things that I noticed is that when they gave envelopes, in fact, they had the envelopes in the back, right behind, in the back of those of the chairs, and, and they had little pockets, and I picked up one of the envelopes, and the first thing that I noticed that is in the back of the envelope, they had the, 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 the tithing on, on the back in, in a sense of like 10 different figures. I think it was like six figures, and then also the amount, the right amount on the tithe. And I said, whoa, look at this. So like they had like $1,000, $100. $500, $50. As if we don't know what 10% is. Hello, somebody. But I think the reason why they did it is because many times we don't really tithe. We, we say that we tithe, but we don't tithe. And, and, and if you look at it, sometimes I think you have to look at what you get paid and then see what is really my tithe. And then, and then take care of your tithe so that you're not robbing God. Because if you rob God, then the doors, you close the doors yourself on God's blessings upon your life. And you don't want to do that. But I, I, thought it was, I thought it was something else when I saw the, the envelope and I looked it up and he said $1,000, $100 tithe. You know, $500, $50 tithe, you know. Sometimes you see that, you know, we, we don't do those things. We don't, we don't, we just give what we think. And we're giving 2% or 3%. And, and uh, it's our tithe, it's 10%. Come on now. I think we need to do that. We need to get some envelopes and then, and then do that. And then we're going to check how much you make every week and say, hey, wait. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But be honest with yourself. So that you really become a tither in the house of God. There's so many things we want to do. So many things God wants to do. In fact, I was, uh, uh, we're going to be going to Australia in November. There's a crusade that we're doing in Australia with a church, Victory Outreach in Australia. There's a lot of pastors that are going, ministers that are going. And uh, throughout the last few years, I had the, the privilege of connecting with some people from Fiji. Fiji is only like four hours from Australia. And uh, in fact, we had a couple of pastors from Fiji that had some very healthy and growing ministries in Fiji. And they were able to, uh, Pastor Manasseh, I don't know if you guys remember him, Pastor Manasseh, he was able to preach here from Fiji. Well, I told him I'm coming to Australia, so um, we connected and we're going to be going first to Fiji. We're going to Fiji for three days. Come on, right before Australia. And we're going to be able to minister at Pastor Manasseh's church. It's a very nice church. But the opportunity is there to be able to connect and build relationships for perhaps a future church and ministry in, in one of the islands, Suva. Suva is, is, is the main island in Fiji. And you never know because there's a lot, a lot of need in Fiji. How many know there's a lot of need in Fiji? It's a beautiful, beautiful place, but there's a lot of need. And maybe in the future... Victory Outreach International is able to establish a church in Fiji. Maybe Victory Outreach Santa Rosa is able to establish a church in Fiji. You never know. But that's the reason why we need to remain faithful to the Lord because the doors 
are great. The opportunity is great to make an impact, not only here in Santa Rosa locally, but also around the world. How many want to make a difference with your life? How many want to make a difference as a church, right? We want to do that. That's the reason why we continue to tithe and to give into the resources of the house. If you need a tithing envelope quickly, just raise up your hand. There's a, there's a, a, a hand going up there in the back. Anybody else, quickly. And, the, and then also there in the back, we also have a, a, uh, a young lady there where you can just swipe your card and you can become a tither that way. But I challenge you, I challenge you, if you have received from this church, from this ministry, if you have received blessings from the Lord, uh, inspiration to keep on fighting, breakthroughs, miracles, maybe salvation. You came through this church to get saved. Maybe your child, your son. You know, there's something that, that God has done in your life, in your family, through this ministry. There's no reason why you should be withholding from, for, from the Lord what belongs to him. Be grateful and give into it so that we can reach other people just like we reach you or your family. Come on, give the Lord one more praise. I want you to stand. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to pray. But it's all together. It takes all of us to make it happen. Father, we just thank you for this great opportunity that we have. Lord, we came in with nothing. Most of us came in with nothing but pain and, and hurts and, and uh, frustration, confusion, Lord, and hate many of us and you changed it you changed it all around god we just come to you to deposit this this small seed that we believe is going to produce much fruit not only here in santa rosa but around the world take this dollars each dollar and turn it lord god into souls for your kingdom father we're praying in jesus name santa rosa the north bay is a needy place there's many young people that need the lord there's many couples that need guidance and in restoration and lord we just pray believing that this is seed to see many souls saved here in our city and around the world bless those that step out and become contributors in the house of god i pray this in jesus name and everyone says amen and amen and amen give the lord one more praise and then come and deposit your tithe your offering unto the lord thank you jesus your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. From every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you, we worship you. Hallelujah, 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 we From generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you, we worship you. Hallelujah, 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 we worship you for who you are. Come on, give the Lord another praise, another praise, another praise. Come on, if you're grateful, 
If you're grateful, give the Lord a praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, worship team. You guys make it so easy for me to preach here this morning. Glory to God. I feel just like a horse that's saying, ah, turn me loose. I feel the presence of God up here so heavy. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. So if you have your Bibles, your iPads, or your phone, just go ahead and, and uh, let's go to uh, First Chronicles chapter 4. First Chronicles chapter 4. I want to speak to you uh, for a few minutes. Uh, the title of my message is Underdog. The Underdog. And... Uh, I had, I had other, other different messages and different messages, but this morning I want to speak to you and I want to bring a word of inspiration so that you can continue to fight the good fight, the underdog. In First Chronicles chapter 4, and I'm going to be switching glasses here because I couldn't find um, the other ones. First Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 9 and 10. If you have it, say, I got it. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10, it says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you will bless me and enlarge my, my territory. Let your hand be with me. And keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Father, one more time I pray that you minister to you people. Touch me, Lord, that I may be able to say everything that you showed me and that you spoke to me in regards to this message. I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit would just anoint me and anoint your people now to receive your word, and we thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everyone says amen, and amen, and amen. You can go ahead and be seated. Praise the, dog, praise the Lord. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I was reading underdog. <laughs> underdog definition. Underdog definition. The definition for underdog is a person with little status in society, or with very little chances of winning, whether it be a fight, whether it be in sports, whether it be in life. An underdog, a person with very little chances of winning. You've seen that over and over again. You've been inspired by movies where they bring this, the, 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 the main character, but the main message of the movie is... Um, an underdog, doing something, winning, becoming somebody. Praise the Lord. Now, in boxing, there was a, 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 a big, uh, big underdog. I think one of the, one of the main uh, uh, upsets in, in boxing was the fight between Douglas and Tyson. Douglas and Tyson. You remember... Um, Maybe you remember, I'm not sure, the, um, the fight. Let me see. I, I, I got it here on, on the side just to kind of uh, draw a picture for you. Buster Douglas is the standard of all upsets in combat sports that are now measured with. No one gave him much of a chance heading into his title bout against Tyson. At the time, Tyson had a 37-0 and professional record with most of his wins coming by knockouts. 37-0. and Douglas was a mediocre boxer who had blown his first chance to secure a championship when he faced Tony Tucker for the IBF heavyweight title. The odds maker gave him a 42 to one underdog, oh Jesus, which seemed about right heading into the fight. Douglas 
surprisingly held his own as, he, as the fight progressed. And he survived the count when Tyson dropped him in the eighth round. But Douglas went on to knock Tyson out in the tenth round. Came back, got knocked down, got up. Securing the biggest upset in combat sports history. This is, this is the biggest upset in boxing that ever taken place because who he was facing. An individual that the minute he walked into the ring, whoever stood in front of him, he would knock him out. Some took only like 10 or 15 seconds. Some other ones were lucky if they lasted 35 seconds. But he got 37 and 0. And he comes in and everybody is saying he's going to take this guy. He's a mediocre boxer. He's no, he doesn't have a big name. He doesn't have. He comes in and he beats Tyson for the very first time in his boxing career. The biggest upset. Somebody that when he came into the ring, everybody thought he's going to lose. And I got to preach this to you because I know that many of, you, many of you came to the Lord hearing those words over and over in your life. You will never win in life. You will never win in life. Because of the lifestyle that you lived. Because of the ways that you lived. And today I want to I wanna challenge you one more time to go back to the beginning where God touched you. And God showed you that all things are possible if you believe. That there's nothing that God cannot do in your life, in my life, or even as God takes us to minister to the people in our community and around the world. That we would have the type of attitude and mentality and spirit that says there is nothing that our God cannot do. Underdog. Underdog. Come on, give the Lord a good praise. In the Bible, we see many individuals who can definitely qualify for this, this word or this title of being an underdog. I think one of the biggest underdogs in the Bible that you and I know or have heard about or watched movies about is David. When David fought Goliath. When David fought Goliath, everybody says you are dumb if you are going to, you are stupid if you're going to face this giant. This was an individual that had been challenging the, the armies of Israel. This individual was a giant. He was 9 feet, 9 inches, almost, almost 10 feet tall. And he's been fighting his entire life. And you have a teenager, a young man who comes in, never fought a fight before. He's a teenager who just was, was, was there tending the sheep of his father. That's all he did. But he came in and something happened when he faced Goliath. When he heard that he was challenging the people of God and nobody would stand up and fight. He says, I will fight. Everybody thought, even the king of Israel, he told him, there's no way you can fight. He has been a fighter for a long time and you never fought a single fight. And he said, put my armor on you at least if you're going to go fight. He says, no, I have a God who is bigger than this giant. I have a God and I have, and my faith is bigger than my God, that my God is bigger than this giant and my God is going to take him out. It is important for us to know that it requires something of us as we, we are underdogs. We've been underdogs. If you really connect with who you are and who you was before, I want to let you know that in a sense, we all been underdogs in our lives. Today, God wants to inspire every one of us through the life of this young man. Here in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, we find an extensive list of genealogy. Genealogy. For the most part, you and I want to skip this entire chapter because it's very difficult to pronounce the names that are on there. But the entire chapter is about genealogy. And so and so was the father on so and so, and so and so have five children, and so and so became the father of so and so, and all the names are a little bit more difficult than pronouncing Guadarrama. With that, I tell you everything. That's my last name for those that don't know. 
But the, the names, I mean, it's very difficult to, to do that. I'll give you a little example of that. The first name is easy to pronounce, Perez. Perez, Hezron, Carmi, Her, and Shobal. Reha, son of Shobal, was the father of Jahad, and Jahad, the father of Ahumai and Lahad. These were the clans of the Sorathites. Hijo. <laughs> These were the sons of Etam. Jezreel, Ishma, and Adbash. Their sister was named Hashleloponi. <laughs> Penuel was the father of Gedor, and Ezra the father of Hasha. Hasha. So it goes like that. I'm, I'm giving you just a little example of what he said. But he says all these people were, this is their father and, 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 and these are the descendants. These are the descendants. And then he goes on to verse 8. It says, then close who was the father of Abhad and Ab Asobedah and of the clans of Hariel, son of Huram. And then, and then, he, and then verse 9 comes and this is what he says. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you will bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. And then he goes back to verse 11. Kelub, Shahab brother, was the father of Meir, who was the father of a stone. A stone was the father of Beth, Rapha, Pase, and Taihan, Ich, the father of Ir, Nasha. These were the name of Reka. And he continues the entire chapter. So, as you can see, that the pattern of the genealogy that is given on this chapter is broken right over here in verse 9. And it's just to stop and talk about a young man by the name of Jabez. And it is important for us to see this because, because I, I want you to know that God wants to speak loud and clear when he stops the, 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 the rhythm of the entire chapter just to say something about this young man. Jabez. From verse 1 through verse 8, and from verse 11 all the way on, Chronicles, we simply read of families, starting with a father's name, who was the father of so and so, and then the genealogy. But here it stops and talks about a young man by the name of Jabez in Chapter in verse 9 and 10. And the first thing that we see, and I want Perez to follow me on this, is that this was seemingly a fatherless child. A fatherless child. And I'll tell you why in a moment. Jabez is introduced without his father's name before or after him. Everybody had a, this is the son of so-and-so. This is the father of so-and-so. But when it comes to Jabez, he doesn't say this was the father of Jabez or Jabez was the father of somebody else. He just simply says Jabez as if he had no father, as if he didn't come from, from anybody. Jabez. Without saying much about your base father, the Bible says a whole lot. By excluding his father's name and not having father's name, the Bible is speaking loud and clear to every one of us here today. Scholars agree that something of great dishonor had taken place in that family. The tribal genealogy of Judah had omitted or taken away the mention of Jabez, Jabez's father. The absence of Jabez's father name tells us that something of great dishonor had taken place in that family. 
and had discredited the family so much that the tribe refused to keep his name in the genealogy of the entire people of God. Can you imagine that? Whoever his father was, they believed he did something so terrible that they kicked him out and they said, we don't want to include his name in the name of our family. Woo, my God. Boy must have been a bad boy, huh? He said, no, not this guy. Not this guy. We do not know if his father was a drunk or an abusive father. A father who abandoned his family. Or if he was a criminal or an immoral man. We don't know. Nothing is said about, about his father. But the fact that Jabez's father's name is not mentioned. Tells us that Jabez was the son of a man who did something so terrible. That was not deserved to have his name remembered within the family of God. And by his terrible actions brought a dark cloud to the life and the future of this entire family. Can you imagine that? His father, his father did something that kicked him out of the family, genealogy of the father, the, the, the God's family. So number one, this child, Jabez, was a, it seemed, it seemed that he was fatherless. He didn't have backup. He didn't have somebody to help him. He didn't have somebody to instruct him. He didn't, want, he didn't have anybody to give him advice in life. Second, the second thing that Jabez had in his life is that he was in deep poverty. Deep poverty child. Poverty. He had no land and no inheritance at all because that would come from his father. But he didn't have a father. The fact that he says, God, that you would enlarge my territory tells us that whatever the father did, destroy or squander the name and the tribal inheritance. See, every tribe, tribal family would receive in those days a piece of land that they could cultivate and harvest for economic provision of the family. Their food, their income, and their provision will come from working the land that was given to them. But with the father's actions, not only was his name removed from the family, but the piece of land was also taken from the family, leaving the family with no source of income at all. Just remember that. There's no property. The family has nothing. They are in complete poverty at this point. This is where he's coming from. This is where he was born. This is the, the, the birth of Jabez was to this family. A family with no father in the family. A family with no income, no source of income. Because the land that was supposed to be given to them was taken from them because of the actions of the father, whatever he did. So the father did not leave anything for the children. The children are in total poverty in that town. Now, here we go to the part where we see this young man as a total underdog. He's an underdog child. We are told something about his birth as well of this young man. His mother called him Jabez because she born him in pain. Hello? Hello? His name, his name means pain. <laughs> as if it wasn't enough to be poor. As if it wasn't enough to not have a father. In those days, it was real bad when the father was not in the family. Today is bad, but in those days, well, like, like super bad. It was terrible. There was a curse on that family. This boy comes from that family. She's saying this child was born at a time in our family where our circumstances were so miserable that there seems to be no hope at all in our family when this boy was born. And 
I sorrowed at the very birth of the child, not because I didn't want a child, but because everything was stacked up against him. When he was born, she says, I'm going to give him the name Pain because of the terrible situation that we're in. I don't know exactly the whole situation she was in, but knowing what happens here in the life of Jabez, it gives me a, a bigger picture of what she was going through. The mother is pregnant, having a baby, don't know what the father has done. Maybe he's not in the picture. He disowned the family. Something happened really, really bad. She's about to have the baby. And she says, the name that goes with this boy is pain. Because not only we are in a dark moment in our lives, our life is a mess. But our future is so dark, there is really no future for us. There's nothing bright about the future and this boy is going to walk into a dark future because of the condition of our family can you imagine that your name is pain because in darkness and in pain you will walk for the rest of your life we are poor we have nothing we have no father we have nothing here in our home this is your name this is your future this is your destiny can you imagine that Somebody says that is your destiny. I know some of you. I see a couple of you that know you've been in jails or even prisons. And you felt like that was your destiny. This is my destiny. Some of you went from one relationship to another and you lost a family. And you lost a family and you felt like this is my destiny. This is how I'm going to live for the rest of my life. This boy was given a name from the beginning and said, this is your name. This is your destiny. But hallelujah, there is a God in heaven. Hallelujah, there is a God who loves us. I said, hallelujah, that there is one who is concerned about every one of us. Hallelujah, there is a God who cares for us. Everything was so painful knowing that there was nothing positive in their lives. Nothing established or hopeful into this boy's future. That she says, your name is pain. Your name is pain. will be pain. Your future is pain. Jabez, Jabez, this young boy. This young boy, as terrible and as dark as his life was, this boy made the right choice. In the midst of all his terrible life and, and, and where he was living and, and the situation he was in, Jabez chose to make one decision, and that was to honor the God of Israel. Jabez chose to honor God. Even in the midst of his situation, his circumstances, his name, and his future that looked so dark, he made one choice. Because every one of us has a choice to make. Nothing can take that from you. No one can take that from you. That you have a choice to make. Nothing can take that away from you. When you want to do something in life, there is a choice. It all begins with a choice that you make in your life. This boy made the right choice. He chose to honor the God of Israel. See, we are told something about his brothers here. His brothers, the Bible says, that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Now, it doesn't mean that he was better than his brothers, but simply that his brothers had followed, perhaps, the example of their father. Theologians believe that the reason why he said like this is because he made a choice to honor God when the rest of his brothers chose to go in a different direction. He was more honorable than his brothers. He pleased God when his brothers, everything they did displeased God. They were in sin. They were in a life of trouble. But this young boy says, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to live. I'm going to honor the God of Israel. He knew from birth that there was a God who loves them. He knew from birth that there was a God there in the land that he could honor. And he knew that that God was good. So he made a choice and made a decision. In the midst of his pain, he says, I'm not going to do what my father 
father did. I'm not going to follow the footsteps of my father. I'm not going to follow what my older brothers are doing. I'm not going to choose that lifestyle. I'm going to stay focused. I'm going to honor. I choose to honor the God of Israel. I will pray to the God of Israel. I will love the God of Israel. I will put my life in the hands of the God of Israel and I will honor him for the rest of my life. One decision can change uh, the entire trajectory of your life if you make the right choice to serve the God of Israel. Come on, somebody. He made the right choice. Jabez, like a diamond, shines in the midst of the most obscure environment because he chose to be faithful to the God of heaven in the midst of everything being dark. As far as you could see, nothing but darkness for our life, for our family. Nothing good would happen. This boy makes the right choice. And like a diamond, chick, it illuminates everything. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to serve the God of Israel. I'm going to serve him. Like a diamond shines in the midst of the most obscure environment. Because he chose to be faithful to the God of heaven. Jabez could spend his entire life crying over his land that he didn't have. Saying my dad didn't leave us anything. I was victimized by my family's condition. My brothers was, were against me. And my mother even named me pain and sorrow. He named me that. He could have stayed complaining about that for the rest of his life. And he could have said, I have a good reason to be who I am today. I come from a life and a family of criminals. Poverty. What you expect? I'm selling dope because there's nothing else. I don't know how to do anything else. Nobody gave me a chance. He could have cried forever. But this boy says, I will serve my God. I will trust the God of heaven. I will do something with my life. And he did it. And God did amazing things in his life because this boy believed in the God of heaven. Come on, somebody need to give him a good praise. This is the type of message that we bring to our community. This is the type of message that we take to other parts of the world. A message that says there is nothing impossible with God. If you believe in God, God is able to raise you up from the ashes. God is able to change your life. When you believe in God, he transforms the drug addict into a preacher. He transforms the gang member, the gang member, the violent gang member into a leader of the house of God. God is able. Come on, somebody need to give him a good praise. Jabez, he could spend his entire life crying about his, his misfortunes of life. And he will be right when he says, what you expect of me sitting in San Quentin State Prison? What would you expect of somebody like me? Talk to so many of them. That's exactly what it, What you expect? What you expect? I had nobody. My dad killed my mother in front of me. What you expect? I was messed up from the beginning. I never had a chance. But this boy, this boy challenges that. This boy says, ah, uh ah. -uh. Just because all the misfortunes happen in your life, you don't have to live like that. You can make one decision, one choice, and say, no, I refuse to be like that. I'm going to serve the God of heaven. I'm going to trust and believe in God and see what happens. And he did it, and he changed everything. Changed everything about his life and his future. Oh, when I read these stories, it just touches my heart. Because in a sense, I look at myself and I say, man, that's the underdog. That's the underdog in you, Billy. That's the underdog in you, Mundo. Every one of us here, that's the underdog in you, honey. Huh? Waiting for your dad to come in as a little girl. And you sitting down on the sidewalk waiting because your dad said he would come. Never came. Never came. 
Never came. Feeling lonely, rejected. What do I do with my life? Over and over, same thing. Praise God. But God says, your daddy may not want to pick you up, but I got room for you. I'll pick you up. I'll pick you up. I'll pick you up. I'm going to bring you up. I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to bless you up. I'm going to, oh, I'm going to, I, I chose you. I selected you before you was in your mother's womb. All oh, the world can reject you. Your family can reject you. People can look down on you. Oh, but I won't reject you. I love you. I got a plan for your life. I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to use your life to glorify my name. Oh, God is interested in J. Best individuals that were underdogs, but they say, we choose to trust God. And God says, I will use you. I will change you. I will make something beautiful. I'll make something beautiful out of your life. Come on, somebody. I'll make something beautiful out of your life. I'll make something beautiful out of your life. This is the God that we serve. Someone that will not reject you, don't matter where you come from, don't matter where you've been, don't matter what you've done. He don't reject you. He's simply looking for somebody that is willing to trust in Him. Trust in Him. Instead of complaining, living his life that way, with a poverty mentality and poor me, poor me attitude, Jabez, the Bible says, he prayed to his God. He prayed to his God, and he made three requests in his prayer. As he looked to God for answers in his life. The first thing that he prays for, Perez, he says, Lord, bless me. Lord, bless me. He says, Lord, that you would bless me. Look at that. The King James Version, I love this King James Version. And this portion of scripture, if you have it, you can read it. But the King James Version, he says, Lord, that you will bless me, period, period, comma, even me. Who Jesus. The King James Version brings it all to the right picture. He doesn't just say, Lord, that you will bless me. He says, Lord, that you will bless me, even me. Who? He knew, like, I'm outside of somebody that qualifies. I don't qualify. I know I don't qualify. I'm real bad. I'm terrible. I know, God, I know, but, but hearing everything about your goodness and your greatness, God, I pray that you bless me. Yes, even me. Even me, God, you are able. I'm the worst of the worst, the Apostle Paul says. I'm the, I'm sinner. I'm the chief sinner of sinners, the Apostle Paul says. Can you still bless me, God? I still believe that even though I was like this, I was like that. I was like that. I'm terrible. Worse than anybody else. God, God, God. Can you bless me? Yes, yes, even me. The worst one black sheep of the family can you bless me yeah even me can you can you this was his attitude saying i know i'm terrible i know where i come from i know my situation i know my circumstance but god 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 can you reach somebody like me oh my god, god lord that you will bless me lord that you will bless me even me you know what, what the Bible says? God granted his request. <laughs> God granted his request. God did it. 
God say yes. I can bless you. I want to bless you. Yes, even you. You come from that lifestyle. Yes, even you. You did that. Yes, even you. When you repent and cry out to the God of heaven. Yes, even you. Yes, even us. God loves us. And God is able to do the impossible in our lives. The second request that he made was that you would enlarge my territory. Oh, Jesus. This boy, this, this boy says, God, can you bless me? Yes, even me, even though I've been the worst. Please, can you? My situation is like terrible. Can you bless me? Can you reach me? Me? Can you? And then God, God, can you expand my territory? <laughs> you know, God always challenging every one of us to think bigger. I'm going to say that. God is always challenging every one of us. As you connect with God, God is always challenging us to think bigger than where we are. Always. He would always do that. Because God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Remember that? He thinks in a whole different way. So when he touches somebody, he's looking at us and he's saying, man, I'm going to move you in your life to the level that you believe me. To the level that you believe, I will bring you up to that level. This young man right here, we see right away that the minute he comes into the Lord, he says, hey, God, 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 can you bless me, even me? And then he doesn't stop there. He brings another request before God and he says, would you expand my territory? Oh, Jesus. My influence. Some scholars believe that he was also, what he had in his mind with this request was, God, would you give us a piece of land? We don't have territory. We don't have land to work. God, would you bless us? Would you expand our territory? Would you give us some acres so that we can make some money, so that I can provide for my family, so that I can do that? And God says, God says that God granted his request. I believe that he had a piece of land. I believe that he was working. I believe that God gave them what they needed. He provided financially for them. But I believe that this boy also had a bigger picture in mind, that in his heart he wanted to make a difference in different parts of that particular world at the time and God says I will grant you your request so that you can make a difference all around you come on somebody need to give him a good praise Jay Best started thinking bigger would you think a little bigger today God has already done something in your life God has accepted you and you know that he brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Would you begin to just, just, just take the limits off? Take the limits off of your life. Start thinking big. I like when I hang out with a couple of guys and they're big thinkers. And they, they think and they say things like big. And I'm like, wow, are you saying it or are you just acting crazy? They believe it. And I love it. I love when I hang around people that think big. God, think big. Because we serve a big God. He has no limits on what he's able to do. But he always meets you at the level of your expectation. That's it. If you believe God for little, that's, that's exactly what, where he's going to meet at the little. But he's looking and saying, who can, who, who can think big? Who can, who can think big? I want somebody to think big so that I can meet him right at that level. At that level. At that level. talking to one of the pastors the other day and we're talking about that the, the, the element or the uh, the element of faith that doesn't change no matter where you're at and we're talking about our ministry we're talking about the victory average we're talking about the whole thing and one of the things that came up is faith is going to it's always going to be required in your life always as you walk with God but then we talked about this it can be faith faith at the level of believing and trusting God for flyers Oh, God, that you will give us money to, to buy a thousand flyers to hand out to the people. God, I know you're awesome. You can come through. Or you can be praying with faith and say, oh, God, oh, God, I'm praying for these 10 acres of land. Oh, God, I'm praying that you will, that you will build a building.
told in, in Santa Rosa, oh God, that you will build this mega church. I believe God that you're going to use us. It, the, same, the same element of faith is required except where, is, where are you? Where is your thinking? Is it right here or is it right here? You're going to need faith over here or you're going to need faith. I'd rather, I'd rather be in travail, oh, praying and believing and trusting God for big things instead of believing and trusting God for little things. There's nothing wrong with asking God for little things, but God is a God of progression. You can start right here, but then he goes to the next level and then the next level and then the next level until you start really praying and believing and trusting God for big things. Jay Bess was a man that he says, God, can you bless me, even me? And then he says, would you expand my territory? I'm thinking big already. Would you do it? And God says, I've been waiting for somebody to pray like that. And he said, he granted his request. He said, yes to you. Yes, because you are believing and trusting God for bigger things. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Believing and trusting God for bigger things. Do you still believe and trust God for bigger things? Right? You got to believe and trust God for bigger things. Don't matter how long you've been walking with God. Trust God. If we can have the keyboard player just come up. I got one more point. Lord bless me. That you will bless me. Yes, even me. Lord, that you would enlarge my territory. And then he says, let your hand be upon my life, Ooh, Jesus, that I will not cause pain. My name and my destiny, they told me, is to cause pain, to be troublemaker. Hello? They said I'm going to be troublemaker my whole life. They put me troublemaker, that's his name. Creating pain, his last name. Oh, Jesus. He says, God, will, would you change that in my life? I don't want to cause pain. I don't want to be a troublemaker in the things of the world. Would you, would, you, would, you, would you change my heart and my life that I would dedicate my life to do something good and positive instead? Something good and very positive can come out of the worst people on this planet. You see it over and over and over again. Where God just comes and the worst individual with hatred in the heart, God is able to grab their hearts and turn them and give them, actually give them a new heart. A heart of flesh that is able to love again. And he's just simply saying, God... Can you put your hand upon my life? And you know what that signifies? Favor. God, can you place your favor upon my life? Your favor so that I will not cause pain to other people around me. Where I go, I don't want to create problems. Where I go, I want to be a blessing. I want to be a blessing. Would you make me a blessing? I know that the world and this society, it gave me a, 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 a name. He put, a, he put a jacket on me that I will be, that I'm a, a curse, that I am pain, that I am troublemaker. But would you change that, God? And instead of that, would you allow me to extend the goodness of God everywhere that I go? Share good things with people instead of bad things. And the Bible says, God granted his request. This was an underdog from the beginning. An underdog from birth. And yet, when he looked to God and when he prayed to God, God turned his life around according to scripture. And God was about to use his life for his honor and his glory. In the midst of everything that was so dark all around him, God says, this boy, I'm going to raise up for my honor and my glory. And in this entire chapter that we see here in the Bible, chapter 4, even though the genealogy goes and he says, and then he stops verse 9 and, nine and, and 10, and he simply talks about Jabez, that Jabez prayed to his God. He talked to his God in the midst of all of that stuff. 
He didn't focus on I have no father. He didn't focus on I got no money. He didn't focus on how poor we are. He didn't focus on any other stuff. He just talked to his God and he says, oh God, that you will bless me. <laughs> I'm not going to look at my, 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 my stuff. I'm just going to say, God, can you bless me, even me, God? I'm not even going to pay attention to all that stuff. Can you still bless me, God? I want to be blessed. Can you, can you bless me? Can you still expand my territory? And can you use my life to do good and not do bad? God, can you do that? And God says, yes, 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 I will do it. And God did it in his life. If God can do it in the life of Jabez, God can do it in your life. If God can do it in the life of Jabez, God can use your life. God will use our life for his honor and glory. Do you believe God? I want you to stand. Stand to your feet and give the Lord a good, good praise. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me give you this with this I close. Take away. Take this home with you. If you I said a lot of things. But if you can keep this as you go home with you. Number one. Number one. That you need to remember this everywhere you go. I'm never. I am never out of God's reach. I am never out of God's reach. I don't care where you've been. What you've done. Where you come from. I don't care your actions yesterday. Or even this morning. Or last year. Or when you was a small boy or a small girl. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference if you've been in prison so many years or you've been a good individual your whole life. It doesn't make any difference. Whatever, whatever you think that is a barrier impossible to cross, cross that thing this morning. Destroy, tear that down this morning. That thing cannot stop God from reaching you. That thing cannot stop God from changing you. And that thing cannot stop God from blessing your life. Come on. God wants to bless your life. Take this home with you. I'm never out of God's reach if I believe. The second takeaway is this. Little people can dream big dreams. Little people can dream big dreams. And when I say little people, I'm not talking about your height. I'm not talking about your stature. I'm talking about people maybe with no status in the community. Very low status in the community. Maybe you're an underdog or you've been an underdog your whole life. Little people. They think we're little people. But God don't look at us as little people. God says if you believe. If you pray to me. If you connect. I'll make big things happen in your life. Even though the world can consider you little people. Maybe with no education. Little people. God says I'll raise you up. I'll use your life. I'll bless you up. I will do all these things. Not only little people can dream big dreams and see the fulfillment when God is in it. Because that's the key. Anybody can dream. But little people, when we connect with God, we can see the fulfillment of those dreams. Do you still dream? Come on, lift up your hands and close your eyes. Do you still dream? Can you close your eyes and begin to dream? Something, maybe a dream that you had in the past and it's gone because... Your situation because of where you've been, because of how life has treated you in the last, you know, year, two years, five years, whatever it may be. You say, man, the dream I had is God. Can you lift up your hands and begin to say, God, God, I believe. I believe. I, I, God, 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 help me to dream again. To dream big. To dream big. Dream big. Because the third, the third takeaway is God is willing if you are willing. God is willing if you are willing. Can you lift up your hands if you are willing and say, God, 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 help me to dream again. I want to dream again. I want to believe big again in Jesus' name. Come on. Somebody lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Hey, glory. Glory. You've been an underdog all your life. God is saying, I want to bless your life. Do you believe like Jabez believed? And do you believe I can do it? If you believe that I can do it, come on. Step out of your seat by faith. By faith, step out of your seat and say, God, I believe it. I believe you. Maybe it's your finances. You feel like 
like an underdog. And this morning, step up. Step up. Step up. Step up. Step up. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Lift up your hands. I Lift up your hands in the presence of God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I exalt God is not done with you yet. He's not oh, done with you yet. Come on. It's time to start thinking bigger. It's time to start believing God for bigger things. It's time to say, God. God. Expand my territory. Expand my mentality. Expand my mentality, oh God. 
Expand my perception of you, God. Come on, come on, come on. You lived a life of poverty. You lived a life of sin. You lived a dark, dark life. I can still hear your prayers. He's very attentive to your prayers. To you, Shalabaka, I sing a song to you, yes, God. and I exalt thee. Oh, Love. Some of you are, are making some Lasting decisions in your life. Some of you right now, as God is ministering to you, it all starts with a decision. One decision in your heart. Right now. Right now. That's where he started for this young boy, this young man. That's where he started with him. I'm making a decision. I'm not going to follow the example of how my father lived. He was a lawless man. He lived to satisfy the appetites of the flesh. He, he wanted nothing to do with God. He was a drunk. He was abusive. But I'm making a decision today. I'm not going to follow after that. No more, no more, no more. Even as a Christian, even as a Christian, some of you, the enemy comes and attacks you because you was impacted by somebody in your life. That show you the wrong way and you live that life for a period of time or for many years. And it's hard for you to change that now. But today make that decision. I'm not giving into it no more. I'm not giving into this no more. I'm not giving into it no more. I'm not giving into it no more. Perhaps brothers or friends or family influence you also. They taught you how to, how to do the things of the world. And today you got to make a decision. I'm not going that direction. I'm turning my back on all of that today. I'm turning my back on a promiscuous lifestyle. Shakaya baha setekeya baha. I don't care what the world says about you or I don't care what testimony you would have in a testimony, what, what the thing is with people on the outside. God says you can stop that right now, right now, right now. You don't have to be known as that girl that is out in the streets. You don't have to be known as somebody like that because you have a father who loves you. You have a father who cares for you. You have a father who wants to bless you and expand your territory and your blessing. You have a father who wants to use your life not to bring evil into the world, not to expand with sin into the world, but God wants to use your life to expand good things. 
Lift up your hand, lift up your hand, lift up your hand. God still has power to perform miracles. I got I, I to gotta remind some of you, God still has the power to heal cancer. God still has the power. God still has the power to give you a new heart, a new mind. So, Father, we believe you for big things today. We believe. We believe that if you did it for Jay Best, you can do it for us. God, I pray for the entire congregation here and those that are watching online. God, that you will touch them, Lord. You touch them even though they're underdogs. That you, 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 you love underdogs. You love to bring us up out of darkness to show the world the power and the love of a living God. Thank you, God. Do that in all of our lives today. I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your hands. And I want you to say, Lord Jesus. Come on, say it loud. Say, Jesus. Here I am. I surrender to you now. I make up my mind. I make a decision. That I will follow you. For the rest of my life. Lord. That you will bless me. Even me. That you will expand my territory. That your hand will be upon my life. That I will not create pain. But that I will expand. Good things. To the entire world. Use my life, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Just lift up your hands. Father, cover us with your grace, with your anointing, with your power. I pray that you will raise a powerful man and women of God out of this congregation that will touch the world with goodness, with your goodness, all the days of our lives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your spirit that is ministered to all of us. We give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Come on. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a good praise. Come on. Come on. Give the Lord a good, good praise. Hallelujah. Come on, thank you, God. Come on, let's rejoice. Let's rejoice together. We have a God who loves the underdog. Come on, hey. Oy. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are